What is going on guys? TD for 3 here and I'm finally back with another video. In this video, as you can see from the title, I'm going to be talking about the badges that I believe might ruin 2K20. So here's the first little list I got of it. So these ones here are all new. Clamps stay in front of the ball handler. That one probably won't seem to be a problem. But off ball pass improves player ability to bump and harass the offense off ball. Also, probably won't be another huge issue. Trapper makes life difficult for offensive player when trapped. Now, this one could be bad because there's also, or there's already cases where you're trapped and your guy already launches it out of bounds. So now if there's a badge, even making it more of a higher chance, not a big fan of that. Tireless Defender reduces stamina loss when exerting effort on defense. If locks are as good as they are last year, they will be unstoppable like they will lock everything down because I mean they just look at that I don't understand clutch shooter boost shot accuracy and closeouts that one's a little iffy depending on if that one can go to Hall of Fame that's probably like dead eye but we'll see about it green machine increases bonus given for consecutive excellent releases this one's kind of weird because if say it's a non shooting build and all of a sudden they keep knocking down shots and then they continue to do it We'll see. I'm not a big fan of it. Ice in my veins. No problem with that. Steady shooter. Reduce the penalty for contestant shots and the bonus for open shots. Now that one worries me because in past two, three years of 2K, we've had problems with stretch bigs just launching over people. And there's going to be no doubt that they get this badge. And if they're hitting a lot of lightly contested shots and heavy contested shots, that's just not gonna be a good thing. That's something that nobody wants to see is just people launching up shots and getting rewarded for it. Here are some more. We have deep fades, help you hit post fades from deep twos and threes. Can only hit from three if you have a decent three point rating. Fades have already been overpowered, especially with grand badges, takeover, whatever you wanna call it. So can you imagine a post score just basically doing a post fade from the three point line, fading the half court, and it's probably gonna go in sometimes if they have somewhat of a decent rating and their badge is activated. Deep hooks, post on hooks, that makes it increasingly harder for defenders to contest. Combat, smooth lockdown, example, tier three, deep hook shot, downgrades to tier one. Again, I don't know if I have a huge problem with this one, but post scores have been, especially in part, just dominating and been really stupid overall. I mean, there are very good post players, but there's some that literally just abuse the game. And there haven't been a whole lot of people that use hook shots, but this might actually bring the hook shots in. We'll see whether this one's a good one or not. Right now, I'm thinking that it's not going to be a good one. As a slashing badge, increased percentage on driving layups and dunks against power forwards and centers. This one was made for shorter point guards, which I don't like because, I mean, how often do you see six footer dunking on a seven footer, right? You know what I mean? Finishing layups. It's just, especially, it's just not a thing for the game. I feel like, especially in the competitive scene, you don't want to see people driving and taking up, putting up bad layups and just getting really lucky for just running up to the basket and pressing square. Here we have a few more. Quick first step, your first dribble has a higher chance of breaking the opponent's ankle, gives a boost to ball control on the first dribble, and has increased percentage of successful blow buys. I don't like hearing the word blow by. And as an offensive player, a point guard, even for me, I don't want blow buys back in the game. I don't like this first dribble, the higher chance of breaking the ankle, a match that would take over, Hall of Fame ankle breaker. That's just not, it does not seem like it's a Especially when ankle breaker is already an option. Ankle breaker, I have no problem with that. Handles for dates allows you to pull off more dribble moves for be, before becoming fatigued. You know what? In the park, I have no problem with this. But when it comes to pro-am and really the competitive part, I don't want to see that because especially if somehow there's a dribble glitch again, just constant ankle breakers, that quick first step. I, I just don't like, I think that there, there needs to be more of a stamina issue in 2K. Needle thresser, Threader, boosted PNR in tight pass situations where there is a need for a precise pass from multiple defenders. I like this one because there are a lot of times where you're looking to make the pass and 2K just doesn't allow you to make it. They throw it to an opposite side and stuff, so I like that. We got dimer back, flash pass are unpluckable. Makes it increasingly harder for the ball to get stolen from you. And that's pickpocket. Locks will hate this. I don't because I'm a point guard, but if I were just watching or a fan of the game i probably wouldn't really like this we will see if it just basically evens everything out with pickpocket and unpluckable which is what it says it's gonna do 
but it could become overpowered, especially if it's in Hall of Fame badge that you can possibly get. So we'll see about that one. Uh, yeah. So we here we have range extender, range extender, boost deep threes and deep twos. Basically, just limit his range. No problem with that. Volume shooter. Okay. For people who've been playing 2K for a while, you know that in 2K16, 2K15, you would get cold if you would not put up a certain amount of shots. This has boost ratings when you maintain 2 plus field goal attempts per minute. Field goal attempts per minute required depends on tier of volume shooter. Okay, so Mike Wang said that there will be no penalty for this. It'll only be a positive badge. And if that's the case, then there's not a huge problem with it. But just boosting ratings for firing up shots is a little weird. A little weird to me. But we'll see how that goes. Space creator, more effective step back jumpers. With how shot creators were last year, I don't think that this is even necessary. I think that with the post score, this could be very bad as well, like a post shot. I'm not a big fan of that. Tyler Shooter, I'm fine with. Deadeye, I'm fine with. Really guys, I didn't have a whole lot of horrible things to say. There are some that I absolutely hate. I hate Space Creator, you know, I hate the quick first step, blah, blah, blah. Some of the defensive badges as well. Really, I have a bad. I just have a bad feeling about all these new badges. There's what 72 badges or something. I think that some of them are going to be so overpowered. But I'm wondering that if the offensive defense one, defensive ones, will just even each other out. I'm hoping that's the case. Otherwise, we're gonna have a problem. I, it all depends on the gameplay. The badges might not even matter. If we have 2K18 gameplay, none of the defensive badges are gonna matter because they're literally just gonna be blow bys all the time. Ankle breakers, if we have 2K19, a lot of the offensive badges aren't gonna matter, especially if we don't have a dribble glitch because the defensive players will just dominate like they did again. But guys, I hope you enjoy. Kind of just giving her a little refresh on the new badges and what I think about some of the badges. So if you do enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to be trying to drop daily videos up until 2K20. And then once 2K20 hits, I will be dropping daily to two videos every single day. Every single day. So thank you guys for all the support. Like I said, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Twitter as well. Thank you for all the support. TD for three. Peace.